Last time. Last time. Last time they won last question. Hosanna to the Son of David. As the Lord was entering the holy city, the
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Pueri Hebreo Horum The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of an ass. 
The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him, that followed him, shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. The Gospel of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Procedamus in pace.
Almighty and living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied. He provides me with speech. Each morning, he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too, I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken me, all who see me deride me, they curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him, let him release him if this is his friend. Many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. They divide my clothing among them. 
they cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel, sons, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are. And being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The narrative of the Lord's Passion will be read by the congregation for the, mark, for the parts marked C as supported by the choir. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, the man called Judas Iscariot, 
went to the chief priests and said, What are you prepared to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 silver pieces, and from that moment he looked for an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus to say, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go to so-and-so in the city and say to him, The master says, My time is near. It is at your house that I am keeping Passover with my disciples. The disciples did what Jesus told them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, he was at table with the twelve disciples, and while they were eating, he said, I tell you solemnly, one of you is about to betray me. They were greatly distressed and started asking him in turn, Not I, Lord, surely. He answered, Someone who has dipped his hand into the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man is going to his fate, as the scriptures say he will. But alas for that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed, better for that man if he had never been born. Judas, who was to betray him, asked in his turn, Not, Not I, I, Rabbi, surely. Jesus answered, They are your own words. Now as they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of you from this, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. From now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in the kingdom of my Father. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all lose faith in me this night, for the scripture says, I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after my resurrection, I shall go before you to Galilee. At this, Peter said, Though all lose faith in you, I will never lose faith. Jesus answered him, I tell you solemnly, this very night, before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus came with them to a small estate called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Stay here while I go over to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and sadness came over him, and great distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake with me. And going on a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. Nevertheless, let it be as you, not I, would have it. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So you had not the strength to keep awake with me one hour? You should be awake and pray not to be put to the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cup cannot pass by without my drinking it, your will be done. And he came back again and found them sleeping. Their eyes were so heavy. Leaving them there, he went away again and prayed for the third time, repeating the same words. Then he came back to the disciples and said to them, You can sleep on now and take your rest. Now the hour has come when the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. My betrayer is already close at hand. Now he was still speaking when Judas, one of the twelve, appeared, and with him a large number of men armed with swords and clubs, 
sent by the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the traitor had arranged a sign with them. He had said, The one I kiss, he is the man. Take him in charge. So he went straight up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, My friend, do what you are here for. Then they came forward, seized Jesus and took him in charge. At that, one of the followers of Jesus grasped his sword and drew it. He struck out at the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Jesus then said, Put your sword back, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, who will promptly send more than twelve legions of angels to my defence? But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say, this is the way it must be? It was at this time that Jesus said to the crowds, Am I a brigand that you had to set out to capture me with swords and clubs? I sat teaching the temple day after day, and you never laid hands on me. Now all this happened to fulfill the prophecies in Scripture. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. The men who had arrested Jesus led him off to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter followed him at a distance, and when he reached the high priest's palace, he went in and sat down with the attendants to see what the end would be. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus, however false, on which they might pass the death sentence. But they could not find any, though several lying witnesses came forward. Eventually, two stepped forward and made a statement. This man said, I have power to destroy the temple of God and in three days build it up. The high priest then stood up and said to him, Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But Jesus was silent. I put you on oath by the living God to tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus answered, The words are your own. Moreover, I tell you that from this time onward you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. At this, the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. What need of witnesses have we now? There, you have just heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They answered, Jesus Then they spat in his face and hit him with their fists. Others said as they struck him, Play the prophet, Christ, who hit you. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You too were with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This man was with Jesus, the Nazarene. And again, with an oath, he denied it. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, You are one of them for sure. Why? Your accent gives you away. Then he started calling curses of himself and swear. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crew, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people met in council to bring about the death of Jesus. They had him bound and led him away to hand him over to Pilate, the governor. When he found that Jesus had been condemned, Judas, his betrayer, was filled with remorse and took the 30 silver pieces back to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. They replied, What is that to us? That is your concern. And flinging down the silver pieces in the sanctuary, he made off and went and hanged himself. 
The chief priests picked up the silver pieces and said, So they discussed the matter and bought the potter's field with it as a graveyard for foreigners. And this is why the field is called the field of blood today. The words of the prophet Jeremiah were then fulfilled. And they took the 30 silver pieces, the sum at which the precious one was priced by the children of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, just as the Lord directed me. Jesus then was brought before the governor, and the governor put to him this question. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now, there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Pilate said to them, What am I to do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression, that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people, to a man, shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort around him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak, and having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes, and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, The chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He puts his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants to. For he did to say, I am the son of God. 
Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. Please kneel. Please stand. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In truth, this was the Son of God. And many women were there, watching from a distance, the same women who had followed Jesus from Galilee and looked after him. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea called Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate thereupon ordered it to be handed over. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Now Mary of Magdala and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the sepulchre. Next day, that is, when preparation day was over, the chief priests and the Pharisees went in a body to Pilate and said to him, Pilate said to them, You may have your guard. Go and make all as secure as you know how. So they went and made the sepulchre secure, putting seals on the stone and mounting a guard. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the world is so divided today. All kinds of wars are being fought. Culture war, civil war, economic war, moral war, whatever kind of wars, today there is great disunity and lack of peace in the world, in society, and 
within our own family. All these wars and division have come about simply because we want to find peace and fulfillment in our own ways rather than the ways of Christ. The way of the world to find peace and which we know will bring greater division is through power, through wars, suppression of the truth, distortion of facts, just like what <clears throat> the Pharisees tried to do after the death of Jesus when they went to see Pilate. Through such means of undermining truth, those who are weak, those who are vulnerable, we think that power and superiority will bring peace in the world. This is why the world is so divided. No matter how powerful you are, how powerful a country you are, you notice this question of armament has no end because everyone lives in fear of another. This is true not just on the global level, it is also true in the very lives that we lived. This was the situation of the Jews in today's gospel, which we read at the very beginning of this celebration before we bless the palms. The gospel speaks about precisely the Jews welcomed Jesus. They sang Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna initially meant God rescued us, God saved us. Eventually, it became a jubilant cry of victory, of triumph. They thought that Jesus would be that political military warrior using all his divine powers to destroy their enemies, the Romans. And that there would then be peace and Israel will once again become that Davidic kingdom, all-powerful, as during the time of King David. But you know, my dear brothers and sisters, this is not the way of God. This is not the way of Jesus. Jesus came into Jerusalem. He was riding on a donkey, not on the horse. A horse is a symbol of a warrior going into war. If you sit on a donkey, it means to say you are a messenger of peace. Jesus came into Bethlehem to be the one who will bring peace to humanity, but not according to the ways of the world. He came as a lowly, humble servant. He came to preach forgiveness. He came to liberate people from their slavery to their anger, to their passion, to their greed. Jesus came as a lowly servant, as what we read in the first reading from Isaiah. Jesus came not to destroy the enemies with power, but with humility, with forgiveness. He was non-resistant to his enemies. In fact, when Judas betrayed Jesus, 
Jesus was willing to allow Judas to exercise his freedom. When they tried to arrest him, Jesus told Peter, put down the sword. Jesus allowed himself to be arrested and to be crucified. The way of Jesus, of course, is not the way of the world. The way of kingship of Jesus is not the powers that today many political leaders use to destroy others, to destroy the weak and the vulnerable. Jesus used his kingly power in the way that serves humanity. He does not compel us to serve him. And if, when he invites us to serve him, it was not for himself, it was for us. It was to set us free. It was to give us life. Jesus came as a ransom for many. He journeyed with us, he walks with us, he leads us. This Jesus is one who identifies himself with us in all things except sin. This is the kind of kingship that Jesus exercised, a moral authority. That is the most powerful form of authority. Juridical authority will only suppress people. It's moral authority. Moral authority that is founded precisely on this obedience to God. So today, when we celebrate Palm Sunday, in the gospel that we have read just now, the Passion, you have taken the parts of the congregation. The congregation, of course, you have taken those parts that nobody wants to take. You condemn Jesus. You took all those parts that call for Jesus' death. And it is strange. You are made to do that. Because the truth is, we are no better than the Jews in today's gospel. They welcome Jesus, Hosanna, to the son of David. They laid their garments for him. They held palms. But they will crucify Jesus by their life, by their deeds, by their words. Simply why? Because Jesus did not live up to their expectation. Does Jesus live up to your expectation? The world cannot accept Jesus, just like the Jews cannot accept Jesus. They were looking for a different kind of king. They were looking for a physical liberation. But Jesus wanted to give them something more. But because Jesus did not lift up to the expectations, instead of choosing Jesus, they chose a rebel, a bandit in place of him. And we too, in our own life, we all have our expectations of God. And very often, God does not live up to our expectations. We all think, isn't it true? If we are good Catholics, we are involved in the church, we help out the poor, then the Lord must bless me with good health, good career, plenty of money, good life. There should be no problem because, you know, I help the poor and I help the church. I help the cardinal. How could God treat me in such a way? How could I suffer a terminal illness? This is not fair. We think that God, therefore, should give us the best of the things of this world. And that is why when God does not live up to your expectations, you pray so hard, 
to strike first prize to Toto and you didn't win that three million. What do you do? You give up on him. We turn to the new age. New age believe we have the powers. We are divine beings. We turn to ourselves. We make our own gods. Or we turn to all those prosperity gospel that promises, yes, if you give more, you will be blessed with greater riches. This is our all, our own image of God. You know, it is ironical that the Bible makes it clear God created us in His image and likeness, but now we have created God according to our image and likeness. God, therefore, must live up to my expectation. And this is particularly true when it comes to moral issues. You look at the world today. They want to rewrite the Bible because the Bible teaches hard truths. And we are told the apostles could not even take Jesus' teaching and they left him. The disciples. Too hard, he say his teachings. And it's true today, many Catholics, they're supposed to be Catholics, but they don't really believe in the Bible. Fundamental moral issues regarding sex, regarding gender, regarding marriage, abortion, euthanasia. These are very clear teachings that are found in the Bible, the Word of God. But today, even theologians, even some church leaders, they want to reinterpret so that the people can accept. So do you change the Bible to fit the minds of people or should the people be challenged to lift up the gospel? Indeed, in the gospel we read, Peter denied Jesus. The apostles all left him. That's why Jesus says, if you strike the shepherd, the flock will be scattered. And this is what is happening in the world. The devil is striking the shepherds. This is the saddest part in our church history. The devil is striking the shepherds. That is why the church is divided. Because we no longer stand on the Bible, on the Word of God. We rationalize, we contextualize, we try to water down, to dilute the gospel so that we can say we are still worshipping Christ. We are not worshipping Christ. We are worshipping ourselves. We, are not worship, we have no love for the Word of God. It is our own Word. This is the truth. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, today we are told in the second reading of Philippians, and especially also in the Gospel, is the way of self-emptying, obedience to the Word of God that we find life. Humility, obedience. Jesus in today's Gospel, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus emptied himself of his divinity to assume our humanity even unto death. If we want to find peace in this world, we need to follow the way of Jesus. We need to strip ourselves of our ego, of our pride. Don't think that life is always competition to be the best, to be the greatest, to be the most famous. We have the best of this world. This is not life. It cannot bring you peace. Be grateful for what the Lord has blessed you. Be contented with what the Lord has given to you. If you are given a position in life, it is not to control others. It is not to boost yourself up. It is to raise people up. Jesus was not a king for himself. He was a king to make every one of us kings and queens. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the way to peace. Obedience, humility, serving others, 
without asking for return, without acknowledgement, we just do our part and we just lift. That is what brings us peace. If you are able to live in that manner, you are truly a free man, a free woman. And there will be peace, there will be unity. Let us reflect. Let us stand for the profession of faith. Lord, I believe, do thou increase my faith. Lord, I believe, do thou increase my faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. In today's readings, we are reminded of Christ's selfless love and humble obedience. Let us follow his example and humbly surrender our needs and hopes to God the Father. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that as it enters Holy Week, the powerful symbol of the cross may be a force of hope and renewal of our lives, confronting many with the need to be reconciled to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope Francis and our Archbishop, Cardinal William Go, that their words and actions may always mirror for us the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for leaders of government around the world, that they may exercise their office in a just and compassionate manner with greater dedication to the alleviating the suffering of the poor who bear the brunt of war, disease, and climate change. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lonely and abandoned, that they may unite their sufferings to those of Jesus and have their spirits lifted and restored to hope in a God who loves us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect who are preparing to receive the sacrament of baptism at the Easter Vigil, 
that God might encircle them with his love and protection and keep them on the path that leads to him and the new life of grace he promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of worship, that we may imitate the humble and obedient Lord by emptying ourselves for the sake of those in our human family who most need our support, the hungry, the homeless, and the forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, hear the prayers of your family. Help us to embrace your son's example of loving humility and take up our crosses with joyful obedience. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may your reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not marry it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is through the right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and His resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise You, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, Holy, of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending on your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. There the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Of each other, the sign of
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please do join in the singing of the hymn for communion, your only son. Your only son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from on high to walk upon this guilty soul. And to become the Lamb of God O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God I love the Holy Lamb of God O wash me in this precious blood my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Your gift of
Let us stand. Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for some announcements. Dear friends, today we begin Holy Week, the holiest time of the year for us as Christians. In observance of Holy Week, please take note of all the following announcements. This week, there is no breaking of word session as we commemorate our Lord's Paschal sacrifice being Holy Week. We will resume our sessions in the week of Easter on the 13th and 14th of April. As we begin Holy Week, there will be the Tenebrae service on 2nd April today, this evening at 8 p.m. Tenebrae meaning darkness or shadows is a prayer service that combines sacred music and scripture, reading to reflect on the passion and death of Jesus. Please note that there will be no Tenebrae on Holy Thursday night, as the fathers feel that the emphasis will be on the, re the altar of repose to accompany the Lord that night. So the Tenebrae is tonight. On Holy Thursday, we will remain in silent prayer with the Lord through the night. The collection Pro Terra Sancta, or collection for the Holy Land, will take place this coming Thursday on Holy Thursday. All mass offerings collected from the congregation on Holy Thursday will go towards supporting the Church's charitable, pastoral and educational efforts in the Holy Land. Also on Thursday, this coming Holy Thursday, as in all Holy Thursdays, we celebrate the great gift of the priesthood with the Eucharist. We invite you to pray especially for our bishop and all priests of Singapore who continue to tirelessly serve the people of God in this land. We will be celebrating the Chrism Mass at the Church of St. Teresa at 10.30 a.m. The holy oils that will be used throughout the year in the various liturgical celebrations and sacraments will be blessed at this Mass by His Eminence, the Archbishop. And we will also, all priests will renew their priestly vows. For those of you, the lay faithful, who wish to be there to support and encourage your priests, we encourage you to do so. If not, we ask of you at that time, wherever you are, to pray for the shepherds of this nation. As the Archbishop has said, strike the shepherds and you will scatter the sheep. So if you have no strong shepherds, we will all be scattered. So let us pray for all our priests this coming Holy Thursday as we renew our priestly vows. Finally, do, do continue to pray for the cathedral's elect, the confirmants, candidates who will be baptized, confirmed, or received into our family at the Easter Vigil. Lastly, I want to highlight that uh, we would like all of you to plan ahead your schedules for the week. We know that maybe you are very busy with many things, and we hope you know, the pandemic is over, and this year we are ready to welcome back all our people to accompany the Lord as we walk with Him to Calvary and to the Resurrection. We have placed tentages outside the church together with uh, screens so that we could welcome all the crowds back to come and be with the Lord. Maybe some inconvenience in the heat outside, but let us accompany the Lord in these sacred days together as church. Please know that on Holy Thursday, there is no lunchtime Mass according to liturgical law. There is only the Chrism Mass in the morning at St. Teresa's Church and the Mass of the Lord's Supper in the evening at 7 p.m., which will be presided by the Archbishop. After the Mass of the Lord's Supper, which will include the washing of feet this year, after which we will have the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament throughout the evening till midnight, accompanying our Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane. On Good Friday itself, which is a day of fast and abstinence for all Christians, we will have three Passion services, 10.30 a.m., 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., there will be no lunchtime mass according to liturgical law on that day. On Holy Saturday itself, we celebrate the mother of all vigils, the Easter vigil. Catholics always feel scared huh, to come for this, but it's the greatest Christian celebration, right? So we encourage you to come and participate in the Easter vigil. It is at 7.30 p.m. here in the cathedral, with, and so there is no 6 p.m. sunset mass. On Easter Sunday, we will have the same Mass timings, 8.30, 10.30, and 6.00 p.m. Lastly, although 
the Archbishop institutes the ob days of obligation again from next Sunday onwards, we want to ask our congregation not to live by obligation. We move through Holy Week because we love Jesus Christ. So Holy Thursday is not a day of obligation. Actually, Good Friday also not, you know. But we don't live by obligation. We live because we love the Lord, we love His Church. We ask you to come to participate in all the liturgies of this week and to truly allow this week to be a holy week for all of us together. We look forward to seeing you in the coming days. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Mother, together.
pray for us, Holy Mother of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Once again, we welcome you to join us this evening, this evening only, 8 p.m. sharp, for a very meaningful, prayerful, and very moving tenebrae.